I looked carefully over the casualty reports on my screen. Scanner reports noted only a few million humans were still alive, scattered pockets of survivors over small areas on one continent. The others had either been cleansed completely or simply glassed by the fleet. During the opening stages of the attack, it was pretty simple. The hardest targets were hit first, military installations and aircraft facilities. Basically anything that could aim at us, we immediately vaporized. A sizable nuclear armament was sent against us, but it was meaningless against our ship shields. They stopped fighting us after a cycle. Now it was a simple matter of finishing the job and collecting a few slaves. Mm, my lord, a quiet, weaselly voice from behind me spoke. What? Can't you see I'm busy? I spun my chair around and looked at one of the weakling subordinates. Mm, my lord, oh, radiant one, er, uh, Castilia has a report for you, he groveled, offering a data pad. I took it and looked at the report. This makes no sense, how? I put my hand on my forehead and involuntarily chuckled. So the locals have some fight in them. Send Daedalus Legion down, all of it. Just then my communications array chimed. Captain Verilus of the Castilia, how charming. My Lord Radiance, I have news. How quaint of you to think you can contact me direct. One of my fleet cruisers is not responding to my hail. Her shields and engine are shut down. I need authorization to send in a repair crew. Flay me later if you must, but I need authorization. He barked. I could sense a tone of desperation in his voice. Why, Verilus, is that fear I detect in your voice? I said with a smile. I was looking forward to his insolence punishment later. Communicator chimed again. Two more captains. My Lord Radiance, my entire engineering crew has vanished. My ship's shields are failing. My Lord Radiance, I have lost contact with one of my enslavement teams. They aren't responding to any hails. His voice was one of unnatural concern. Silence! I barked at them and called them to order instantly. It would appear the locals are putting up some resistance. Captain Renari, send forth the entirety of Daedalus Legion. We can find slaves some other day. Just finish them. I ordered and returned to my readouts. An hour passed, and I looked wistfully over my fleet. My jubilation suddenly cut short at the sight of a frigate suddenly breaking formation and charging towards the planet. What was that? Why did that ship break formation? I barked into the command module. We know not, my Lord Radiance. The ship just cut comms and left. We need not care, my Lord Radiance. At the speed it's going, it will disintegrate on contact with the ground. My underling said from behind me. I don't care. What is going on? What happened to Daedalus Legion? Have they been deployed yet? I spun in my chair to face my underling. I noticed something out of my right eye. I got up and looked around. Nothing but shadows. My Lord Radiance, is something the matter? Hmm. No, just shadows. What is the report on Daedalus Legion? I asked, taking care to move slowly as I scanned the room. I swear I saw something. No, my lord. I shall contact them immediately. They landed about ten minutes ago. They should be... The lights flickered. Once again, I saw that shadow out of the corner of my eye. Oh my, I shall contact engineering immediately, my Lord Radiance. My underling squirmed and squelched out the door. I sat back in my seat and looked at the reports again. As I drew a cup of omigen to my lips, I sputtered as I read out a report. I nearly choked on the juice in my hand. Six ships in my fleet had gone dark. Two cruisers, three frigates, and one corvette. Their engines just shut down. Shields gone and just went silent. I quickly typed on a few keys and ordered surrounding ships to investigate. I looked out of the viewing port and noted which ships were moving. One ship had its lights and engine go out as it was approaching. I knew that ship. I chuckled to myself as I realized something. As I typed its comm channel into the network, I suddenly realized, hey, wait a second. Its power is out. It can't even pick up any comms I send. I chuckled at my own lapse of judgment and sat back in my seat. A few minutes later, the report came back. Every crew member was gone. No traces of any signs of anything at all. Not even paw prints. The entire crew had vanished after just switching their ship off. No escape pods launched. No cowardly attempts at suicide. Nothing. As I read the reports, I kept getting that strange twinge in my eyes. I kept seeing something. Every time I looked at it, it would vanish. A new report came in. Daedalus Legion was found dead. All of them. 6,000 men. I looked at some of the pictures and I nearly began vomiting. Missing heads, arms, legs, hearts torn out of their chests. 
tentacles burnt to a crisp, while others were little more than piles of bones or hollowed-out armor sets. Some men had their faces turn a literal ghostly white, permanently contorted into an expression of absolute terror. Then the cascade began, more reports coming in, scout teams going missing, slaver units finding locals to enslave only to vanish moments later. Some units engaged in pursuit of the local sapients, only to have arms and legs suddenly rent from their bodies. Others appear to have been mauled to death by some strange creature. Armored columns had broken down, in some cases literally falling apart while in motion. I began to panic as I noticed more and more engines were flaming out. I noticed more communication channels disappearing from my console. I looked behind me as the lights flickered, only to notice a streak of purple blood now leading towards a shadow in the hallway. I stood up, grabbing my trusty sword from its resting place nearby and looked around. I walked forward with extreme caution. I could feel it. I could feel someone, something, watching me, somewhere. I stood by the light fixture at the end of the corridor and stopped dead in my tracks as I smelled the stench of blood, all kinds of blood. I focused my warrior's eye and quickly flicked the switch on and off again. The light went on, casting a short but telling glow on the massacred, mauled, and half-eaten corpses of my underlings, a Sarani with his face eaten clean off, revealing only his skull, a Daragontis with all of his six arms missing, what was left of his body pinned up into the wall with someone else's spine. Several of the insectoid species serving the Empire lying on the ground on their backs with their bellies sliced open. Blood saturated the room. Red, blue, gold, purple, violet, and pink, all the colors of the Emperor's servants used to paint a macabre work of horrifying art. I noticed a shadow and swung my blade. It cut only through the blood-stained air behind me and embedded itself into the doorframe. It dug so deep I could not dislodge it and picked up a crewman's rifle instead. The lights flickered more and finally went out. I had to use the flashlight on the gun in my hands to see. I headed back to my console and checked, the soft blue glow from the readouts helping calm me down. No comms channels were open. The entire fleet had gone dark. Having come to the conclusion that something was very wrong, I prepared an escape pod. On the way, I would hit the ship's data core and wipe it clean so the locals could never find anything out about us. I headed back down the corridor. The bodies that greeted me previously were now gone. The blood, the death, the decay. Gone. The walls and floor are pristine and clean. Suddenly, inexplicably, I heard nothing. I saw nothing. There were just bodies. How could something vanish so fast? I shook my head and held the rifle up. I sank into a defensive posture as the noise around me suddenly died. The lights flickered for the last time as the ship's reactor shut down. Nothing but deathly, empty silence. I wasted no time and kept crouched down and quiet, doing my level best to stop my footsteps from echoing in the empty halls. I spotted something out of the corner of my eye. A shadow. A set of shoulders. Who is there? I yelled out, aiming my rifle at the noise. I moved the flashlight towards the sound, and it illuminated the smiling remains of a crew member, two of his four arms missing, his leg partially chewed through and his chest open such that I could see his unbeating heart. I let out a shriek of terror and recoiled as I made eye contact with him, his face contorted in a twisted smile. When I brought the light back to face him after regaining my composure, he was gone. I looked left. I looked right. I looked behind me. I looked out the window. Nothing. I sprinted towards the data core room and get the hell out of this place. I opened the door, my eyes darting around to try locate the shadows in my peripheral vision, and gasped in shock as I saw what was in there. Skeletal remains of the entire computation crew. Stripped of flesh and hanging from the walls, symbols etched into the ground and ceiling with their blood, a cruel effigy of some strange idol made of bones and skull. I could not handle it at this point and began to violently vomit in the corridor. Once my stomach was empty, I moved in and tried to set the data core to purge itself and overload. I retched heavily as I had to move some skeletal remains out of my way. The terminal was unresponsive. Even emergency power and local batteries were drained. As I turned around to leave, a skeleton hanging from the wall dropped down and landed on me. I panicked and ran into the corridor and smashed it into the window, shattering it. I wasn't going to be here one second longer and made my way to the escape pods. 
I could hear strange noises the closer to the pods I got. The more I ran, the louder they got. Whispers, screams, growls, roars, all manner of horrific noises echoing in my dead ship. Get away from me, I screamed, and began to fire wildly at anything I could see or think I saw. I finally got to the pod. Miraculously, it was still operational. I stuffed my rifle in it and activated the keypad. Something grabbed me. A thing wrapped around my foot and suddenly dragged me toward a wall, pinning me up against it. Get off me, I demanded, struggling. No matter how I moved, I was kept in place. The light from the star moved just so, illuminating my assailant. It was a crew member from my ship, a fellow Karasani. It was little more than faltering cartilage and a mishmash of flesh and bone, but its eyes, now a blinding, horrific bright red, stared straight into my soul. Hubris, arrogance, selfishness, hatred, greed. Oh, yes, you stink of it, it said to me. I couldn't hold much and began to dry heave as the sight of the bones and cartilage barely hanging onto the face moved as it spoke. Why? It tightened its grip on my throat. Once we hunted them, their souls so potent and flesh so sweet, barely a few hundred could sate us for a decade. Now there are so few and we cannot hunt lest we risk their extinction. So now we will hunt you. What are you? I gasped out at it. We are shadows, nightmares, ghosts in the machine. We are them, we are they. We were once humanity's nightmares and ghouls. Their emotions were so potent we could feed off them just by being near them. We have not killed for millennia, until you came along, it said, and threw me against the opposite wall, pinning me against it. Why did you do this? Do we not have the same enemy if you hunt humanity? I asked. It growled loudly, its horrifying animal roar echoing through the ship. You killed too many of them. Now there are too few. Now we must find new hunting grounds. Now we must kill new prey. Humanity is barely a fraction of what it once was. I think it is only fair the hunter becomes the hunted. Please, please stop. I nearly voided my bowels again, both at the horror I was witnessing and the fact I had become so cowardly as to beg for mercy. Evil always tastes better than good. There is nothing in this afterlife that sates our cravings more than the cowardly screaming of a cockroach who thinks he is a king. You will make for a fine hunt until mankind can spread its roots one more. It growled and slammed me against the pod's door. We are coming for you. We do not rest. We do not sleep. We are as patient as the universe itself. We can hide anywhere, and you will face vengeance for what you have done today. I was thrown into the escape pod. Your gods will not save you now, it said with a horrifying chuckle. It hit the button, and I was ejected into space, heading for home. Just as the stasis unit kicked in and I began to freeze for the long journey home, I got one last look at the ship. Every window had hundreds of eyes, glowing various colors staring right at me with sadistic smiles and scarred or half-eaten faces. The faces of my countrymen, of slaves, of soldiers, of men I once knew partially eaten, faded or blasted away, now looking at me with a mixture of hatred and hunger. What have I done? What did I just unleash upon the universe? This was my fault. If I had just left the planet alone, now they hunt us. Now they feed on us. What have I done?